to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. You know, we have a saying here at Deep Adventure Ministries that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. When God created you, he created you with a purpose in mind. When you were conceived, you received your physical DNA from your parents, but you received your spiritual DNA at the moment of your conception, you were infused with a spiritual, rational soul. And I could tell you, my kids, you know, every one of them is so unique in the physicality and their skill set and their emotional temperament. They were definitely infused with a beautiful, unique, spiritual, rational soul that's, that uh, makes them in the image of God. But God has given you skills, He's given you abilities, given you things you like, things you don't like. And all that is meant to kind of help you find your path in your life. There is, a, there is a path that God has for you. The Bible even says, I know what I have in store for you. God has something in store for you. And then it says, plans for peace, not destruction. A future reserved for you full of hope. And then he says, if you seek me, I will let you find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me. So you knuckle draggers out there that think as you, if you give your life to the Lord, your, your life's going to be boring and miserable and you're going to end up doing stuff you don't like, you couldn't be further from the truth. The greatest way to feel totally, fully alive is to abandon yourself to God's will and then, um, and then run with your gifts and talents and watch and see what God does with you. You, you know, there's a time when you have to die to all of that, but then when you die to all of that, when you get, surrender everything to Jesus, then he will resurrect those, fill it with his resurrection power and grace and and uh, your life will be so full, so satisfying, so challenging, and so awesome. You know, my son Jeremiah, when he, he got towed into 85-foot surf here on the north shore of Oahu, when he did that, that was a total abandonment to that wave. And he knew there was a more than 50-50 chance that he would die. Um, when you go out in 35, 40-foot-plus waves, and this was twice that big, you make a decision before you paddle out that you're going to die and that your buddies will resuscitate you. Uh, fortunately, that didn't happen to Jeremiah that day, but he rode the biggest waves ever ridden. The Coast Guard called them 100-foot waves. But in Hawaii, we try to humble it down a bit. But he, when he got towed into that wave, my buddy Crazy Todd towed him in behind his jet ski, and he let go of that tow rope, and he dropped down the face of that 85-foot wave. Um, he, believe me, he, wasn't, he was abandoned to that wave. He wasn't going to be able to kick out because it was hollowing out over his head. Um, and as he rode it for over a mile and a quarter, uh, it got bigger and steeper and faster and eventually hollowed out so that uh, he was deep inside the barrel. A barrel was so big he could ride two semi-trucks through it. And then he, and then he, uh, then he kicked out the back. He kind of Superman through, the, through an eight-foot thick lip, made it out the back, and he had the greatest thrill of his life. That's what being a Christian is supposed to be like. Where it, Christian, being a Christian is for thrill, thrill seekers only. Otherwise, forget it. If you don't want, if you don't want, uh, Christianity is meant for bold people, you know. Uh, and 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 if you're not going, if you're not willing to be bold, you just want to sit on the couch and say Amen. Uh, you're kind of running with the wrong crowd. And we got a real thrill seeker with us today. Someone who, the minute I met this man, I go, I want to be friends with this guy for life. This is, and I really. We're really going to find out more about him than I haven't really got to know Michael Westrick that much. But Michael Westrick, uh, I don't even know how to say your bio, so we'll let you do a little bit of giving us a little background. But Michael, I met him at a Legatus meeting in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure, Michael. Thank you, Bear. Well, when we met, uh, you shared with me a little bit, you know, because I tend to be a little bit adventurous. What are some of the things that you love to do outside of the fact? What I love about Michael is he's entrepreneurial. He has started and been involved in many successful business projects. We have a lot to learn from a man like this. Uh, my dad was a professional speaker, deacon in the Catholic Church, and he used to ha have uh, retreats at his Eagle's Rest uh, hot home up in the Northwoods of Minnesota for presidents of companies only. And presidents of companies, in a lot of ways, they kind of fly alone. And uh, they need the encouragement of each other. So thank God for groups like Legatus. But when I meet these people, 
these people who run big, who have started businesses and run business, it's it's at great risk and total dedication and the mixture of fortitude and justice and prudence and self-mastery all go together. Uh, and then you combine that with the thrill-seeking side of Michael Westrick, and he's quite a character. Hey, before we do anything else, Michael, tell us about what you really dig on doing uh, in your spare time, your so-called hobbies. <laughs> so what are some of the things, that, adventurous things you've, you do or have done? Well, you know, I, I'm not quite sure exactly when it happened, but at one point in time, I, I, I lost my immorality, my immortality. <laughs> so I really, I mean, I, yes, I, I knew it was possible that I could die, uh, but it just, I, I never uh, felt like I was on that, that edge, you know, between life and death. I always looked at things as a challenge and whether it was business or drag racing when I was a kid. Uh, but tell us know, about I, drag racing. What's the deal with that? What, what, tell us all about that. How did you get into that? I grew up back in the seventies. So the sixties muscle cars were big and I, I had a 69 Mach one 428 Cobra jet that had been modified, had, had two four barrel carburetors on it, four speed, and this car was a rocket ship. I mean, it was it was a 150 mile an hour car back in the days when the aerodynamics were really, really only <laughs> 100 mile an hour. They had big engines that had no business being in those cars, right? Oh yeah, they had 150, 150 mile an hour. You know, I could take the steering wheel and move it back and forth and the car would just keep going straight. <laughs> well, tell me, uh, were you street racing, or were you? Did you go to a drag track? Uh, both. We we had a local drag strip, an eighth mile strip up in Villa. Oh, that's so cool. I did, I did run a number of, of of Friday and Saturday night weekend races with my buddies, and then we uh, we street raced uh, quite a bit as well. We knew the, the the lone four lane roads where there was very little traffic, and there were other like minded people in in fairly quick cars that would uh, would get together and run the, the quarter mile. So you know it's not illegal if they don't catch you, right? Uh, so I'm told. <laughs> and they probably can't catch you. <laughs> oh, that that's amazing. You know, I, th those bring back days. I, I've never known anything about cars, Michael. Um, I used to read uh, those old car magazines, the Hot Rod, I think was the name of it. And i look at the pictures and i read the words and hear overhead cam. I didn't know what any of that stuff was, but I just thought it was so cool, um, the whole concept of the muscle car, you know. And uh, did now you, you turned wrenches. Do you still turn wrenches or what? Yes, I, I have a, a car collection uh, that I, I maintain, and I still rebuild engines and crannies and rear ends and, and other, uh, you know, minor maintenance things. Well, you know, back in the day, you could work on cars. Oh, yeah. You know, the new My cars. Brother, with all Steve the... I, brother Steve and I had two cars in the driveway with engines out. And, and I'm sure we looked like, like hillbillies. Right. You know, but Bob yeah. and Dad kind of tolerated it because it, they thought it was, it was keeping us out of trouble, you know, uh, building up engines and driving. It was getting you into bigger trouble. They just didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. How, how my dad let me buy that 69 Mach 1 is, is beyond me. Wow. Well, you know, I just remember the guys in, in high school and college that had those kind of cars, and I, oh, man, I took a drive a ride with one of them once. And that, once. <laughs> once. I'll never do it again. But we're talking with Michael Westrick. You know that? What, what, okay, I want to know some other things. So you're, you're big, big into muscle cars, and what's your favorite car you have right now? Uh, yeah, among if you can choose um, in your collection actually it's a 1966 ferrari really it's, it's called the 275 gtb uh spider or or nart spider and and so uh when's the last time you drove it uh last fall really you don't have to take it out in the indiana winters right i start my cars about once every two three months uh, but they don't get driven not until not until the summer. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. huh. that is just so cool. Hey, do, there's something I got to invite you to, Michael. Um, I, I know you're probably too busy, but somewhere around August 6th to the 10th, we're going to be up in uh, Lansing, Michigan. I think I might have mentioned this to you. I really want you to be on our TV show, Long Ride Home, on EWTN. 
Um, and there's going to be a thousand nights on bikes. I know you're not a biker. You're a muscle muscle car driver. But drive one of your cars up, dude. And I'd love to have you as a as a you know we have a segment with you up there, and we'll talk about muscle cars. And I know the guys would love that if you did that. Do you think? Um, I know for the Ferrari is your favorite car, but we got to get an all American. Do you have any? Do you have a muscle car yeah. in your collection anymore? Well, I have a muscle car. <laughs> uh, I've got a, I've got a seventy Torino four twenty nine convertible. Oh my! Yeah, there's that's the one. That's the one. Actually, <laughs> I, I have a Survivor that I bought a year ago. It's a sixty nine Cougar convertible XR seven. What color? It's it's cream. It's cream with oh, beautiful. a tan interior. Yeah. Uh, all original, seventeen thousand miles, four twenty eight Cobra Jet Ram Air engine. Okay. And it, Michael, it still, this is the hard break I warned you about. We already, I got carried away. This is the Berwazek Adventure. Go to our website, deepadventure.com. Sign up for our newsletter. And if you do, you get to see uh, and hear the radio show uh, the morning before it, it airs on EWTN. We send you a YouTube video version of it so you can see what my guest actually looks like. This is the Berwazek Adventure. We'll be right back. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to let everybody know our TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, is showing on EWTN right now. They're re-showing all of season one, all ten episodes, where we ride motorcycles from basically Cocoa Beach, Florida, to the Big Bend country of Texas, and then over to San Diego, and then up to my home in, in Santa Cruz, where I was raised. Hence, Long Ride Home. We replicate a bicycle trip I took. 10 years, 15 years earlier, where I bicycled from San Diego to Jacksonville. Now we took motorcycles from Jacksonville to San Diego and up to Monterey. So it's a great show. It's, it's been on the Arm, it's on the Armed Forces Network. It's on EWTN. And now, you guys, you can go to iTunes, Amazon Prime Video, or Google Play. This is your chance to really evangelize uh, during a weekend when your kids are home or, or uh, guests or your brother-in-law or someone's visiting. Say, guys, check this out and go to iTunes and click on the button. Pay for the $15.99, I think it is, for the whole whole season. And power watch that with people. It's just a great way to evangelize. And it's gritty and it's tough and it's great, great evangelistic and teaching content. So we invite you to go to uh, go to those locations and, and view that. You can, watch, you can see uh, episode one in its entirety on YouTube. It's the only one that's available there on YouTube. But we have as our guest today a real adventurer. His name is Michael Westrick. And I started asking him questions about his muscle cars. He started using numbers and and things like that that I don't understand. So, what, Michael? What what what's tell tell us tell us about this Torino again? I have a, a seventy Torino Ford a convertible. It's four screen with a four twenty nine. What is uh, what is four? Uh, what did you say? What what does the words mean? Four screen. A four twenty nine four twenty nine cubic inch engine, and this one happens to be an automatic. Okay, so I so, want to ask you, will you drive that up to Lansing, Michigan around August 6th through the 10th and join us at least for a day uh, so you can be a cast member of Long Ride Home? We would love to have that car and maybe sure. you too in the show. Okay, that, sure. that, that, is, that is really cool. The men will really dig seeing that car. That is really cool. So La Lansing is what, about 180 miles from you or how far? Yeah, that's, that's about right. Actually, we have a lake place in Coldwater, Michigan. There you go. Yeah. It's about an hour to Lansing. I don't recall getting invited. So, hey, do you have a power boat on that lake or no? Is it a, uh, that type have, of a lake? Yeah, we have a, <laughs> we have a Mastercraft X-15. Oh, that is so cool. So I rarely see. What's that? My kids are usually out in the boat. I hope they're not. I hope they don't have a bunch of cars with their engines out of them sitting in your front yard. You have three boys and a girl, right? Actually, just three boys. Oh, three boys. Okay, good. Well, um. We've talked about this 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 adventure uh, uh, this adventure part of you. I think it equally translates out into this adventurous part of you uh, in your entrepreneurship, um, starting businesses and being involved in, in in businesses. There takes a unique combination of prudence and boldness uh, and fortitude uh, to to launch a business. It takes. A person who, in your bio, you talk about how you've you've been the, the success that you had has never been at the cost of other people. It's a win-win situation with you. Um, that goes to the virtue of justice. It takes self-mastery uh, to get up early in the morning before everybody else does and get to the office and, and push things forward. So, um, can you give us a little bit of 
give us can you give us ninety seconds highlight of of this march of all these different businesses so people get a sense of who we're talking to. Then I have some questions I want to ask you about that. Well, the the business that we that we really did well in was a company called Innotech. And we own Invisible Fence. Uh, it's a dog confinement system company. Yeah, I used to use it, something like that, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we built our own uh, remote trainers and anti-bark collars, uh, tracking collars for hunting dogs, uh, just a lot of small, solid state, very high-tech uh, devices. We were ahead of our time. And so you don't want to talk about the fact that you the reason why you really got going in business was to build radar detectors so you could drive faster. <laughs> Am I right? I, I did. I did build uh, devices like that that would jam <laughs> radar, which, which of course are not legal. So, so we're here on EWTN Catholic Radio, uh, talking with Michael Westrick, an outlaw, who, who uh, created uh, radar detectors because he loved to drive cars cars fast and, and but you had a whole series of businesses that were very successful um, but that was your baby that's the one that you really have a fondness for but you yeah, did that, real estate development and other things too right yeah the the Inotech experience was fantastic because it it came about as a result of engineers that I worked with at another company that I could cherry pick people from and eventually we had 300 employees in in 2002 and Every one of these employees had links to other people, other people that we knew produced, that worked hard, play hard, and enjoyed living. And so when we'd get together in an engineering meeting, there'd be 12 guys in the room, and I, I, I was the first one to say that, hey, the best idea wins. Right. And I get one vote just like everybody else. So it's very creative and very theory Z in a bit, in a sort of sense. You, were, you, were, you didn't operate by... Top down, you operated by consensus, and then everybody has a sense of ownership in the plans and the direction you're going, right? Right, and your ability to sell your idea was big. Well, you know, um, the, the the Legatus Group is so special to me because uh, you know I'm a CPA myself, and I've I've helped nurture people or help people guide people, you know, through their entrepreneurial gift. In fact, I was talking to my wife this morning how I, I've seemed to have this gift of identifying gifts and talents in people and saying. Have you ever thought about doing this? And a lot of times that's helping them start their own business. A lot of times it's starting their, uh, you know, a ministry or something like that. But we're wired with certain gifts and talents, and we should use those. We should use those gifts and talents. Uh, but we're also studying on my Ocean Sunrise Catechism that I have every morning. Wherever I am in the world, you guys can go to Facebook Live and follow me. Um, I click on my Facebook Live stream, and I do 15 minutes of catechism, usually with the ocean in the background. And we're studying right now uh, the seventh commandment, thou shalt not steal. And the catechism uses that as a reason to talk all about um, stewardship, about what it means to be a business owner, what it means to be an employee. And your approach to business is a very Catholic approach to business. You don't see people, in other words, as a cogs in the wheel. You don't see them simply in a utilitarian way. You see them as human beings. Well, everybody has talents and skill sets. And when we can find those skill sets, and when they realize the application, they get joy out of it. I get joy out of it, and the company grows, and we have profit sharing. It's time, and it it, it was a family environment, which I, I miss that part of it. Well, you know, so often have you have you ever done tried to do business with someone that's a, a win lose person who wants to negotiate so they get everything they can possibly get from you? These, if, do you know what I'm well, what is the difference between that and your philosophy of business? Well, I, I still to this day have have vendors, people that I've known for years <clears throat> that I've bought from and and I don't I don't ask for a quote. I tell them what I've got I, I, and I send them the, the material to help them to, to build it and they bill me and I don't worry about it. Yeah, you know that you know them and you trust them. Um, uh, and uh, they have a track record of, of performance. And, and when you nickel and dime people, you, it's kind of a miserly sort of approach to business. Whereas if you over, over, over fulfill your contracts and your agreements, if you're looking for a win-win, I'm not going to do this deal if it's not a good deal for you too. Um, because one of the reasons is because I'm about long-term relationships with people. I don't want to 
take you for all you get and then go on to the next person. And you've really stood for that in your businesses and it's, it's, it's fared well for you. Well, I've, I've made some great friends uh, over, the t over the process. My print circuit board guy used to race with me at Skip Barber. And so, and he owned sailboats and- Now did, so, he, did, he, did you know him before he, he began to work with you or did you get to know him as a friend after he began to work with I, you? I met him as a 19 year old kid. Oh, wow. Back 40 some years ago. Oh, wow. Ran a business out by the airport. Well, we're talking with Michael Westrick, and the only reason why I have him on my show is I met him after speaking at a Legatus meeting, and I go, I just got to get to know this guy. And we tried to make contact a couple of times, but you were always at your down, home down in San Martin. I guess it went through some hurricane damage, or I was on the road, and, we, and I said, finally, if I book a radio interview with Michael, I'll get a chance to get to know him better. Uh, we think, you know, business to me is like a big oak tree. Uh, it, it, it flourishes, and it provides shade and protection for all those that are under the umbrella of that protection. That When you're a business owner, it's an amazing thing that you're doing. You're, you're providing uh, work uh, for other people, for their families, for their families' kids to go to college. Um, so often people have this terrible impression of what a business is. You're just money. You're just greedy. You just want all you can get from your employees. And the successful people I know are really not – for the most part, are not like that. And I was fortunate, like I said, because my dad led these uh, these retreats at his home in the Northwoods. It was called Eagles Rest. And, you know, eagles fly alone. And uh, so many businessmen need that time of being with other uh, business owners and uh, and then and then con talking about you know, the different challenges that they face and, and also challenging each other to go deeper with the Lord. We're talking to Michael Westrick. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Yes, the answer to your question is yes. Uh, how can you become more involved? Can you become more involved in the new evangelization? The answer is yes. And can you do that with us? And the answer is yes. Uh, we have ways that you can take. We have so much content. I was working with someone the other day, and they go, you got too much content here, bro. Normally they say content is king, and the whole problem with most people's websites is they don't have content. We have not just content, but we have video uh, content that's so usable um, for people. And so we want you to become a bigger part of our ministry, and then we will give you access to that content so you can view it and share it uh, with your friends. And the way you do that, there's there's two ways. There's a, uh, something we have called Bears Mug Club. It costs you $20 a month to be to subscribe and to be a member, but we give you uh, instant access. Every episode that we complete on Long Ride Home, before EW10 even sees it, you get to view it, and you get it on an ongoing basis. Um, the radio show, uh, it gets posted there maybe sometimes weeks before it's going to air. So you have that there, and a lot of other of our content will be there. So the, the, the Bears Mug Club is a really big deal to us because, you know, we really don't have anything but surprises in our ministry. Our ministry is very expensive. Every, every episode of Long Ride Home costs about $20,000 to produce, which is usually, which is extremely low for a 28-minute uh cinematic type uh, TV show. And then, of course, we have our radio show to produce. Plus, I do my Ocean Sunrise Catholic Catechism every morning. And so it's expensive. And man, you could, you don't know how much it means to us to have someone that gives $20 a month to our ministry. It, it's, it's funds that we can count on so we can make plans with. And so we really appreciate you going there and becoming a contributor. And uh, then you get to be part of our Ohana. And we'll every two or three months, we have a video meetup where you can uh, go online. We send you the Zoom media, video uh, connection, and you can see me, and I can see you. We can actually talk back and forth. So we have a Zoom video chat meetup with with dozens of people. So I want to encourage you, please, please go become a member of of the Mug Club. Uh, you won't regret it, and we would really value uh, your being there for us because we know the minute you make that contribution, we're probably also on your prayer list too. We're talking with Michael Westrick. He's he's uh, going to be a friend of mine. I I met this man about. Maybe what in the fall, just before a football game at Notre Dame at Fort Wayne, Indiana, the Legatus Group. And he came up to me afterwards, and it was just like this instant, man, I got to get to know this guy. And so this is my excuse for interviewing Michael Westrick. He's a very successful uh, entrepreneurial person, uh, an adventurer, and a strong Catholic. Uh, Michael, can you a can you answer for me what what would be your 
how would you define your values? What would, what is it? What are the most important things in your life? Honesty. Yeah, honesty, integrity. Your name is everything, and and once you tarnish that name, it's it's near impossible to get it back. And so, honesty. Tell me about the practical application of that in your business life. Well, it, it allows you to, to do sincere interaction with other other technical and business people. So unless, you know, there's that integrity in place, people are going to challenge, you know, what you're telling them. You know, I remember, uh, Michael, back in the day, <clears throat> working for Deloitte Touche in, in El Paso, Texas, we audited an oil company. You know, he was a wildcatter, I guess. Or no, he was ex importing and exporting to Mexico. And we found he had a double set of books. And, you know, the oil and gas business, you'll do million-dollar deals just by the phone call, right? No contract or anything like that. And uh, he was instantly out of business. It was his, his mother and dad's business, which he took on. And then he began to, you know, pull too much money out. And uh, his integrity was instantly, everyone who worked for him was gone. And he realized he wasn't the big shot he thought he was. It was those people who other people trusted and went to other businesses, um, you know. And I remember working for a Fortune 100 company. I was the assistant treasurer, and, or I mean, a Fortune 500 company at that time. And we were going bankrupt. And uh, the biggest thing our CFO said was, we need to be 100% honest all the time with any with our our cooperative members and our banks. And every morning I would get a phone call from the banks. And I would tell them the bad news. And because they could trust us, they helped us build a bridge uh, to finally being acquired by a Fortune 100 company. Honesty, uh, deceit is, 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 is self-destructive behavior. What, yeah, what, and, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and it's, like I said, it's just easier to be honest because if you lie to somebody or you lie to multiple people, you got to remember the lie that you told to them. So <laughs> being honest just comes easy because it, it, it's easy to remember and it is the truth. And you know what? I would have told my people, I always told them I don't have good employees. I only have excellent, you know. But I said, you know, um, the best thing you can tell me is bad news. Give me the bad news. That's what I want to hear from you. Give me the bad news. The good news, that goes without saying, but give me the bad news. And so many people want to, well, when are you going to have this project done? Oh, I have it for you next week, and then you know, a week goes by, you don't even hear from them, right? So the honesty, receiving that from the people who are working for you, or your customers, or your your suppliers, right? It 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 you'd rather you'd rather hear the bad news than them have it be whitewashed. The old concept of management by exception, right? <laughs> yeah, my, my my brother Steve paid me a comment compliment one time. Took him through an interview at our company. And I was introducing him to all the department heads and the job that they did. And, and I was being perfectly honest, you know, such and such, you know, is, is why we ship on time every, every day. And at the end of the day, he goes, you know what? Everybody you talk to made it sound like they were the sole reason for the success of the business. And it, it, it was a great, a great compliment. But and and it was the truth. And on the flip side of that, though, when you have mediocrity in your midst, you really can't uh, you really can't put up with it. You can do your best to develop that person. What do you do when you have someone who's uh, just kind of shuffling their feet? Uh, how, how do you handle that situation? It pulls everybody down. Yeah. And so, what do you do? Fortunately, we only had one of those that I ever had to fire in the mm. entire time I was there. It's only so once. So hard to do, isn't it? And, and, it is. Well, then how do you rally them to keep their attitudes up? Well, of course, as I mentioned, these people were cherry-picked. They were, We knew that they, they were good people that loved to work hard, and the environment that we presented at Innotech was, was one of family. People had birthday celebrations uh, at work, you know, and if they took two hours for lunch, not a big deal because we didn't punch a clock. People put in their efforts because they enjoy the benefits that came, came from that. Praise God. You know, the easiest person to fire is the one you don't hire in the first place. So vetting sure. them and, and being very careful about who you select and getting references and, and all of that. But that's the easiest person. And, and my dad used to say, 
it's really easy to find the right skill set. Finding the right attitude is what's most critical because you can have someone with the greatest skill set, but if their attitude isn't good, you know, it sours the whole operation, doesn't it? Good attitude makes up for a shortfall in, in skill set. It does because you can develop the skills. You know, if, if, right. if you're ready and willing and want, wanting to learn, you can develop the skills. Uh, Michael, we're going to uh, just kind of get started on this, and then we'll continue with the next segment. But you were raised Catholic. Tell us a little bit about that, about your faith yeah, I was journey. Cradle Catholic, uh, th three boys, one sister. Uh, very middle class lifestyle, but lots of opportunities to, to do things in our in our family. And and what was your experience in your journey uh, a, a, as a Christian? What was the pedagogy? Was what was the what was the path that, that led to you into a deeper and deeper relationship? You know, I, I, I always practiced my faith. There were times that I, that I fell away, didn't make it to Mass when I should have. Uh, there, were, there were times when we were married and, and our family was young that, you know, I, I became distracted. And there were many times when I know that I made God laugh by telling him what my plans were. So it's been a long journey, and praise God, praise God there's been correction along the way along the to, way, help, me, to help me to move forward, forward in my relationship, my relationship with my Creator. Oh, oh. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with Michael Westrick, who is what is, your, what is your official occupation at the moment? What do we say? Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, because you got so many different things that you're up to. I, I met Michael at a Legatus meeting in, in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. By the way, I'd love to speak to men's conferences. I'd love to speak to Legatus. There's, those are the two places I speak the most. So we'd love to be invited to do that. I, I want to invite you men uh, to, and hopefully I talk Michael into being a member of the Man Cave. We have something called Bears Man Cave, Michael. And uh, what it is is men uh, come to... Uh, our website, deepadventure.com, or the women can sign them up too. And uh, they pay, uh, uh, they subscribe to being a member of the Man Cave. And then we have a secret Facebook group that they're part of. And so they post, uh, they post um, what's going on in their lives, uh, any challenges that they're having. They post, you know, scriptures or inspirational things. And basically they're where the, to challenge, mobilize and equip men to move on in the Lord and go deeper with God. And then every two or three weeks, we have a video chat meetup with the men so we can all talk with each other and we kind of uh, have a shot of whiskey and a cigar and talk story about, um, about uh, what's going on in their lives. And we help them start their own man caves, their own groups in their town. And then we also uh, go through my book right now, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. We're working our way through that book. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to, bear, to, to deepadventure.com and join the man cave. We'll be right back. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We have Michael Westrick with us today. Uh, he's a man who, who lives a life of adventure, uh, which if you're going to live an adventurous life, uh, you better be prudent. And it, because prudent is, prudence is the charioteer, the virtue. It guides fortitude. It guides uh, self-mastery. It guides justice. Uh, but, so this is a man who's, who's learned to combine uh, fortitude, justice, self-mastery, uh, and prudence to launch business after business or help or get involved in other businesses as, the, as they're going. And it always fascinates me, Michael. Uh, good to have you on the show. Thank you. So I want to ask you if you could continue uh, your story of your going deeper with the Lord. And uh, if you, I, you began to talk about that before the break. Yeah. So we, and of course, my wife, who's also a very devout Catholic, uh, together, uh, we worked with uh, RCA IA Home Couples. This is the uh, the process of becoming a Catholic. And so we would have uh, candidates that would come into our home uh, when our children were little, and we would, would discuss what it was like to be a Catholic and what the, what the doctrine of the faith is. And so we kind of, you know, throughout our, our marriage, uh, we, we've been involved with the church in various uh, facets, if you will, and it, it just keeps getting better. What would you say your, um, 
your daily your your prayer life is like now during a week what is it what is your um your devotional or your time of study or I, I have uh, multiple rosaries that I say every every day of every week, and my prayer time is is a is a, an alone time with with my God, and it's it's fantastic. It's rejuvenating, and I uh, I will probably do it till the day I die. Well, tell me um, when you say multiple rosaries, you say one rosary a day, or or what were you? I didn't quite catch what you meant by that. Well, I, I rotate. Between the the joyful, the the luminous, the sorrowful, and the glory, glory. Have you ever seen anything happen that you feel happened because you pray the rosary? Oh, I know that there are are, are people that are helped uh, by prayer. Prayer is the weapon uh, by far. You know, we we all get caught up in the things that are going on in our world and the the, the steps backward into civility that's being lost but the weapon is prayer and and that is what brings about change it always has and always will but you're a busy man you got a lot of work to do you don't have time to pray a rosary oh i've always got time to pray a rosary if i'm driving somewhere and i got 20 minutes that i can get a rosary in okay and and if you guys could see uh, michael's picture if you go to our youtube and wa and watch this particular interview, you'll see there's a man there that looks like a warrior that's full of, uh, there's just a joy about him, but a, a look of determination too. Uh, I don't think I'd want to be in a blind alley if you were, <laughs> if you were a dark alley, if you were, uh, I, I could see there's a grittiness to him in other words, but there's also just this joy and that you can recognize in that that doesn't happen without times of prayer and praying the rosary. That is the weapon. It is. It really yeah, the rosary, rosary in particular. I, I had left the church for many years, Michael, and uh, when I and I never understood the role of Mary. I didn't totally reject it. I just said, God, explain this to me sometime. And then, then there just became this this uh, waterfall of of meaning and understanding about Mary. And I picked up the rosary, and man, do things happen when you pray the rosary. Think about it. You know, a a a, a man and his mother. Uh, what kind of a bond is that? I mean, that is, how can Jesus not answer the requests of his mother? So cool, you guys. If you could see Michael's response, he physically leaned way forward into the camera just now uh, to say that. You can tell that he really means it. And I'll tell you, um, I'm going to tell you, Michael, when I think of Mary, I think of her as a warrior. She's the one I go to battle with, you know. People think of her as this meek and mild, and of course she is all that. But, but she's as I say about my wife, who's a rodeo girl and also tandem surfs with me. My wife is a tough chick. I call her TC. Uh, Mary's known to be messed with, and uh, man, when you when you partner with her in the rosary, I've just seen tremendous things happen. When I take, I'll take nine days to pray for one particular thing at a time, and you can see God moving. It's powerful. What about? Um, your other times of prayer, you you go to mass regularly, or or you, when other than the rosary, what is your prayer or medit? What do you do when you say I pray? Other than the rosary, what does that mean? Well, there there are novenas that I do um, that are online. Mm -hmm. There are number of of priests that have online uh, online presence that mm -hmm. they have novenas that they do, and kind of like what you do, uh, you know, they have they 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 push different parts of the faith mm -hmm. and. Yeah, there's there's always things to do. Uh, try to get extra masses during the week. Yeah, my wife go to the Stations of the Cross on Friday uh, during Lent. Oh, you know, how cool is that? You both do that. That's so cool. Yeah, it remind us of what our Savior did for us. And what is that? He died on a cross horribly for mm. our salvation. Mm. We can get to heaven. Well, you're a man in business. You say you always you never use anybody, and you always do things with justice, which means to give each person what they have due from you. What does God have due from you? That's a good question. I'm, I'm not quite sure what he sees in me, but he, uh, he still helps me, and I, I, I pray every day to draw closer. Well, you know, because if, if, if God created us, basically what he has due from us is everything. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and, and I... 
Yeah, I'm sure there are there are many things that that I don't know about as yet. <laughs> well, I see be, in, in the background there you have your passport, and I bet that's been punched with a lot of traveling all over the world. But there is that ultimate trip we're going to take. You know, when we go to you know, and, and it's 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 life, death, you know, judgment, heaven or hell, and where we're going to spend eternity. How did you how did you and your wife raise your 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 sons? in the faith to, to put them on that right path so they have that passport to heaven? Well, we, we do to the best of our ability, um, bringing them into the church and bringing them the mass with, with us. We went to Catholic schools, which, you know, doesn't, doesn't guarantee anything. And there are struggles, uh, you know, with, as with any family, uh, different members uh, are, are do, doing better than others. And we continue to pray for the, for the salvation of our children, because it is our job to get them to heaven. Amen. And what a burden for a, for a family to do that. But you said something, we took them to church. You made the sacrifice of sending them to a Catholic school, but you're right. If you just send your kids to a Catholic school, don't expect them to remain Catholic. No. But if, but if you're involved with them, uh, taking them to mass and they see you pray, when, what, what, do you, do you uh, rise early in the morning to prayer? What time of day do, do you usually uh, spend time in prayer? You know, I have a brief prayer every morning, and I, I, my wife and I actually get on our computers to get our emails in the morning. And, and then I do my novenas if I'm, if I'm in doing a particular one at that time. Uh, I'll complete that. The readings for the day I get every morning. So is that the um, readings from Mass? Yeah. The it's mass a great readings. way to, to start the day, isn't it? Yeah, it yeah. is. And then throughout the day, you know, when I have times when I'm by myself doing a fairly mindless activity, you know, I'll, I'll pray a rosary. Amen. Well, tell me, and also I, I use some of the apps where there's, um, there's this one app I like. It's Praying the Rosary with Melissa. I th she's a young woman. I think I think of her about Mary's age when Jesus was conceived, and I can just turn on and have her praying that while I'm working too. Sometimes, but now we're running out of time quickly. Your wife, you talk about her a lot. Uh, tell us about that that partnership with her and that that love affair with her. She uh, she has saved me from myself <laughs> <laughs> from the times when I'm a little too far out on the edge. She pulls mm. me back. Mm. Mm. You know, they say that men have a, their eyesight is designed to go see straight ahead and women have peripheral view. And the men are meant, meant to just keep pushing forward, but the women kind of pull us back sometimes, kind of warn us a little bit, keep us on track. But that your children see that love you have for and respect you have for each other. Certainly, certainly. And, and we hope and pray that that example you know, we'll, we'll always come back to them and help them on their journey. Not everybody's been that fortunate. A lot of people have been through really hard marriages and divorces. And, and, uh, and I see so many men say, well, I'll never get married again. And then they start seeing someone and they don't marry them. They just live with them. And I think it's always such a bad example to the children about the hopes and promises that the children have. Hey, Michael, we've already run out of time. I just got to tell everybody, please go to our YouTube channel and uh, Bear Wozniak and subscribe so you can get these. And uh, we want to thank our guest, Michael Westrick, who's an entrepreneurial man. He's there, he and his wife are members of the Goddess. Uh, they live in Indiana. He's a man of adventure, a thrill seeker, uh, muscle cars, fast boats, and everything else. Uh, but his greatest adventure is uh, that he's walking a, a journey, doing a journey. Uh, with the Lord. We'll be right back next week with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10 episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com.